up? We are back, and it is season three of Keeping Up the Conversation, presented by Black Lime Magazine. I'm your host, Miss Tori, and that guy right there is my co-host, Big Ken. What's going on, Big Ken? Oh, me? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> anyway, I know we have a jam-packed show today, or we got a lot of things we want to kind of talk about. I want to start it off with our hot topics. For- yeah, yeah our hot topics for today and i know you know i'm i'm in, I'm in texas so we're we're dealing with these uh with these allergies and this pollen and this mold so that's why you're here you're not hearing my sexy voice because mm-hmm. that's what everybody all, says it's allergies all, it's, mm-hmm. yeah you know yeah it is you know they don't believe us but that what that's what it is kid that's what it is mm-hmm. kid, it's the allergies so anyway so um a virginia police officer um uh, was fired after um, he pepper sprayed a black army lieutenant and hand- and handcuffed him during a traffic stop. This happened in de- uh, December uh, last year. And um, so the police officer in Virginia held an army officer at gunpoint, uh, handcuffed him and then doused him with pepper spray all during an illegal traffic stop. And you know what? I It's so crazy that all this stuff happens. And I just heard about this when it came out, I guess about a week ago. And, yeah. um, you know, Officer Joe Gutierrez was fired um, after the incident. Uh, I don't know if he was fired after the incident or, you know, once, of course, once they did their investigation. After the outrage. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah. But pretty much basically after the outrage, uh, mm-hmm. outrage. And it was it was captured on on video. But, you know, for this to have happened in December, they kept it really, really uh, on the down for a lo- for a while, you know, and maybe, you know, people in Virginia had heard about it, but I didn't hear about it until, um, until we kind of spread around, around social media. Um, I mean, it's just, it's a, it's an unfortunate, uh, incident. Um, yeah, I think they but, suppressed uh, it because they know the, 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 the temperature in today's society is already yeah. volatile. So, uh, you know, they didn't want to probably put it out there at the time or, I don't see how you can keep anything under wraps nowadays. So the yeah. fact that this happened on December 5th and it just now became a thing in April, it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty surprising to me, but you know, you know, I, like I said, it's one of those things where I know they probably worked hard to try to keep it under wraps because the simple fact of they know folks were going to go crazy. Yeah. And, and as I guess, they and should. The, yeah. You know, the sad part about it is that when you look at the when you look at the video, you see that uh, the army uh, lieutenant was complying. Uh, uh, what's his name? Karen. I think it's Karen Nazario. I think that was his name. But um, he w- he was complying. And uh, but anyway, following an internal investigation, um, the department, re- you know, said that Gutierrez did not follow department policy. Um, you know, I looked into it, but they really didn't provide a whole lot of information um, other than the officer was involved in an ac- accident. But uh, yeah, and said that after that, because of that, that they are now uh, saying that the department is requiring additional training for the officers. But some, you know, I think that when you look at that video, they they all listen. They yeah, all I require mean, additional on. training. After all, I mean, you know. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna be quite honest with you. As a black male in America, you can comply or you could do whatever. You really don't know what's gonna happen yeah. uh, at any point when you get pulled over. So what I try to explain to people who don't understand is when you get pulled over as a black man in America, like your heart just immediately starts beating. Yeah. Like when you like when you you see sirens, you hear sirens. Um, it's just something that, you know, that this world has done to us that right. we can't undo. And it's kind of like a form, I guess, of PTSD where every time if you get pulled over for anything, you're afraid just like they might be afraid. Right. Yeah. Right. And I tell people all the time, just because they're police officers, they're still human. So they're not supposed to be afraid because you can't operate in fear and with logic. Oh, yeah. So it's hard to do that and it's hard for them to do their job. So, you know, it's just a bunch Mm -hmm. that goes into it. But at the end of the day, they still have all of the power. So they need to focus more on doing a better job with people in general, because people are, you know, everybody's different. Right. Yeah, of course. You don't know what's what's been going on in that person's day during that day. Exactly. Their life. Yeah. So you don't know the mindset of that person, but. As a police officer, you're expected to be, you know, 
at a certain level. So there's no excuse for that. And, and I, I'm glad that, you know, he was released from his job yeah. as well as any other police officer, because they're the people who are supposed to protect and serve. And when they're not protecting and they're not serving us the way they're supposed to be, then they need to go. Yeah, and it's not it's it's not helping the community. It's not doing us, uh, any, you know, anyone any great justice um, if uh, you know a police officer is, is is scared or has some type of fear even before uh, he encounters a person he's stopping. It just you know I think that I mean I don't you know I know that um, being a police officer and you know nowadays is is I mean it's, it's stressful. I just feel that if you start if you if it starts if it starts out right then you know, it, it could end right. But so many situations like this that are going on, like this one, yep. some that we don't, don't, we don't hear about until later. And some of them we may never hear about. So, um, yeah. So that happened in a, uh, what was that? Virginia. Yep. Um, so also Bernie Madoff, you remember he's a financier, uh, who pled guilty to orchestrating the largest Ponzi scheme in history died today in federal prison. Um, but the sad part about it is that his death what has been this big open mockery on social media. You know, it's kind of like the old adage, if you have nothing good to say, say nothing at all. Uh, that did not carry over into social media because they were, there was some bad commentary on the, on the death of, you know, of uh, Bernie Madoff. And um, that's everybody though. Social media uh, is <laughs> the internet is wild. Like yeah. anytime something happens, somebody passes away. I don't care who it is. You're going to have detractors. You're going to have people who are going to have something negative to say about the person, yeah. even though they passed away, no matter who it is. And yeah. in this situation, like people don't have, um, you know, they don't feel sorry for him because this dude, you know, he took, scammed people out yeah, of not millions, but billions, billions of dollars. Yeah. So like, there's no, that there's no, I don't feel sorry for him. You know what I'm saying? And plus he's an older guy, you know, he, he died of natural causes as they say. So, you know, Hey, you know, prayers for his family and for the people he's around or whatever, but you know. Yeah, that's just that's just the way of the internet. The internet is savage. Yeah, it you know it it is, and you know certainly they had nothing good to say about him. I mean, there's been uh, uh, Madoff has been the subject of extreme scrutiny, including two TV movie biographies. There's just there you know there really hasn't been anything good to say. I mean, this guy, I mean he ruined uh, he ruined a lot of lives. Anyway, uh, Madoff he was 82 when he died. The cause of death so far they're saying is natural causes so um yeah well, yeah but so. i'm gonna tell you something in my research i found out that he had a 150 year prison term right mm -hmm. he had a forfeiture of 17 billion dollars but the prosecutors estimated the whole fraud overall was worth 64 billion dollars wow 64 billion dollars that's a lot, a lot of, a lot of money. That's a, that's a lot of money. And, you know, <laughs> it's just like, you know, in spite of, or despite, um, you know, his death, his, what he did cause, uh, caused, I would say it's kind of, you know, sounds strange, but, uh, caused a lot of death. There were suicides. There were people who died from being so stressed. I mean, his death, his, I mean, his, what he did to people caused so much stress. I mean, it's like, people who literally saved these millions of dollars had to literally start over one guy working at Walmart, you know, um, as, um, you know, a, a, a um, clerk, you know, you know, you just had people who's, who had, um, old money, you know, no, no more, it, no college funds, you know, it's just, so his, his death caused the death of a, a lot of people, be it, uh, be it literally or figuratively his you know, I mean, what he did cause the death of people. And I'm not going to lie. The, uh, his, the whole thing that was caught up, it was some of it was AIG that was caught up in it. And yeah. I noticed that. So when the stock went plummeting, guess what? I went and bought some of that stock when it plummeted. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I benefited a little bit from, little bit, from the fall. Yeah. But, you know, like I said, we never want to see anybody get scammed or anything like that. So, you know, hey, like I said, prayers for his family. Yeah. You know, God rest his soul. Peace out, man. Yeah. 
So yeah, I um, and then you know it, it seems like we're not talking about a whole lot of good stuff, but hey, this is this is hot topics. This is what's going on. So uh, I know that everybody knows. Last Friday, uh, DMX uh, passed away. Um, you know, he was a rapper who 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 blended aggressive menace with emotional sincerity. Um, he passed away last Friday at the age of fifty. Uh, you know, goes by the name of well, real name Earl Simmons. Yeah, um, yeah he died at a White Plains hospital. He died um, at White Plains Hospital in White Plains, New York, uh, one week after suffering a heart attack. And let's just take a moment to remember DMX. You know, yep. uh, I remember that was impactful uh, for me, though. Yeah, I got I got to say that because, you know, for me growing up, like my, the year I graduated high school, 1998 was a big year for DMX. Uh, mm -hmm. it, he was basically introduced to us, you know, what I'm saying that year. And he actually dropped two albums in one year. Yeah. So for, for me, you know, being a hip hop, being, being a, a kid of the hip hop generation, like he was huge to us. So to see, you know, him have the struggles that he had, but also be so transparent. Right. It's rare that you find somebody that meets that that level of fame and that stature that is so transparent and you actually get to see the things that they go through. So, you know, I just take a lesson from it that, you know, even the people who struggle, like many people pointed out in the past few days after his passing that, you know, he was a selfless person. He yeah. gave a lot. And he contributed a lot to other people and he never was really a selfish person and never did things for himself. So that's yeah. big in itself because, you know, at one point, like this guy was like a rock star. They have a video um, of one of his concerts that shows <laughs> it looks like it looks like 50 or 60,000 people in the <laughs> crowd, which is ridiculous. Wow. Like for him to have reached that stature. And, yeah. you know, and go through the things that he, he went through, you know, it, it was kind of hard for us that, you know, or his fans. But we also gravitated to that because we felt like, hey, you know what? He's going through the same type of stuff that we go through, the same struggles. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, he'll be missed genuinely. Oh, yeah, for sure. But I, we have yeah. plenty of interviews, plenty of music of his. Yeah. And, you know, prayers, prayers for his family yeah. and his friends. And uh, carry on the name. Yeah, I remember I told you I met him um, at the Super Bowl in Miami one time. And um, it was when Rough Riders was, were coming out. Remember they used to have mm -hmm. the four-wheelers and all oh, that? Yeah. And so when they came to Miami, they all had those. And so I was um, I was getting ready to go into, um, into a party, and they all rode by. And he stopped, and he gave me a Rough Riders bandana. And he wasn't trying to be flirty or anything like that. And he said... Um, he said, uh, a pretty girl like you don't belong on the, you know, on this corner or something like that in Miami. Pretty and I girl said, like you don't yeah, belong yeah, on this corner. Yeah, you know, and he was really cool. And I said, I said, oh, I said, oh, me and my girl just going into the party. And he said, well, hold on, right. did he growl at you? Did he, uh, No, did he this, this, is what, this is what's crazy is that <laughs> he, he was like a gentleman. He didn't do any of that. And I said, oh, well, you know, me and my girls are going into this party. He was like, okay, cool. Uh, and burn off. <laughs> And that was my interaction with DMX. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to say this before we move on. One of my favorite rap groups is Wu-Tang Clan. Uh -huh. And Wu-Tang Wu -Tang Clan has a character, Lord rest his soul, Old Dirty Bastard. Oh, yeah. ODB, who yeah. It's very similar in kind of like his spirit um, of DMX where they just free people. They, they kind of do weird stuff to everybody else. 
but you know they mean well and they care for everybody. He's carefree. He's just yeah. enjoying life. And that's what I remember about DMX is every, most of the time when you saw him, he was just enjoying life. Enjoying Even life. Even though he and, had yeah. troubles, he, he was, was still enjoy, enjoying, enjoying life. And that was his yeah. way of enjoying life. That, that was him. And, you know, uh, to a lot of us, we feel like it was a demon. But to him, that was just how he enjoyed life. And he still made good music. So, yeah. All right. Thanks. Big Ken. We're going to move on to your fun facts with Big Ken. What you got for us? Yeah, I got Big Ken's <laughs> fun fact. <laughs> All right. That's so funny. <laughs> we got something interesting today. It's going to be real quick. But let me ask y'all a question. How many of y'all eat grapes? Mm, I know a yeah, lot of hands go them. up at home. <laughs> I know a lot of people eat grapes. Grapes are amazing, right? They got them cotton candy grapes. They got all kind of flavor grapes that they created in labs. But let me tell you something. Did you know grapes were flammable? what who gonna grapes catch a grape on fire though flammable i did not know that fire? now in theory you think about grapes wine wine you know ferments you know fermented grapes turns into alcohol but an actual grape itself is flammable somebody <laughs> put a grape in the microwave oh my gosh and if you put a grape in the microwave it will destroy your microwave I have a question. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> First of all, who would do that and why? Like, why? I, I'm not about to put people. You know what? That is how you. That's why some of the stuff we can't do because people like that do stuff like that. It's well, like, hey, hey, hey. I'm not gonna knock anybody. Maybe somebody wanted some I warm am. grapes. Uh, I don't know, but I'm just saying. Like somebody did it and it became something that became public knowledge and then it just spread like wildfire, literally. <laughs> so oh people, God. if you see your kids playing with grapes and they head toward the microwave, you might need to pay closer attention because if they put those grapes in your microwave. It has the same effect as if you put foil or a fork or any metal in your microwave. And side note, it produces plasma when it's heated. When grapes are heated in the microwave, the combustion creates plasma so if you want more info on that take a look at it google it it's out there you know it's what you're gonna do you are gonna mm -hmm. you know what today i don't think i mean i don't think this show is a kid's show but you're gonna make people want to go and try that you know you tell well, somebody not to do it and they do it anyway that's what you're i'm doing. just telling y'all for for reference sake i just had to buy another uh, microwave my microwave you know died during the pandemic and uh yeah they're like 200 bucks so unless you want to spend 200 bucks <laughs> 250 bucks on another microwave i wouldn't suggest you try it not at um, all i'm gonna try it so okay <laughs> i'm gonna go try it now <laughs> okay big spender <laughs> all right best known for their 90s single Whoop, there it is which has been featured in a number of advertising films movies wherever you can look Whoop, there it is was there certified multi-platinum you know we all remember tag team guess who's with us Half of the team is here. I guess that's tag or is that team? Anyway, no, it's tag because <laughs> team is together. Anyway, DC, the Brain Supreme, is here with us today. Welcome to the show. Actor, songwriter, and performer, DC, the Brain Supreme. Yeah, What's up, great. DC? <laughs> you got too much time on your hands messing with them great. <laughs> What's I'm up, like, wow, DC? fun, 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 fun fact. You went from DMX <laughs> to grapes. I know, you know. But, that, that, but it's all good. Before Had we to get shift started, those gears. Hey, yeah. hey, before we get started, I gotta get something off my chest. Get it off, get it off, DC. Sprinkle! <laughs> all right, let's go. Let's go <laughs> you know what? I still laugh at that and I don't even know why. And I made I mean, it up. So so was that was that part? You know what? You you messing you messing up my flow, DC. I had a flow, but now I got a question because of that. Okay, so <laughs> was that sprinkles? Was that part of it? Was that just something? Was that an ad lib? You just no, put okay, that in there. So because I'm an actor, mm -hmm. I prepared right. So all these things were prepared, and I know kids love sprinkles. I don't know why, <laughs> but they love sprinkles, right? And to me, sprinkles is nasty, but I know kids love them. And I said, mm -hmm. how can I incorporate sprinkles? And I was like, we could do the salt bay, but couldn't do the salt bay because I had a long sleeve shirt on. 
Okay. And he kept sticking everywhere. I mean, I had him in my <laughs> ear, my beard. It was crazy. <laughs> And we saw that <laughs> up with sprinklers. It was like that, like a NASCAR crew there, right? And they would just oh my come in after every take and boop, 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 10 seconds, <laughs> seconds coming right back to where it was. And I knew I wanted to do the ode to LeBron James, where he comes uh -huh. to the scores table and throws up the chalk. Uh -huh. Sprinkles that way. I was trying to figure out a way, how can we throw sprinkles all over this kitchen, right? And, you know, I came up with the spin and scoop. You know, I, I couldn't find anybody to make it, but I went to the producer because we had a production meeting the night before. And I was uh -huh. like, I got some ideas. And they were like, whatever you want to do, DC. And I told him all my ideas. So the spin and scoop, uh, the little dance we do is called the yeek. It's for, the you yeek? know, all the southern bass, bass art. Everybody in the South does this dance called the yeek. Like yeek the ATL. Yeek. It's an ATL thing. I'm going to have to look and that I knew up. if I did that, everybody would know what I was doing. Therefore, I represent for the South. That right. was creative. That was smart. That means, a lot. that means a lot to people that you're not bigger than your station or you remember them or you remember your culture, the culture right. you made and the right. culture that made you. Right. right. And what else? Uh, just overall, we all worked together mm -hmm. and it came out the way it did. And it did. I'm just very proud of it. People think, you know, we just showed up, but it's like, no, I put in preparation. Yeah, you were right? ready. Because I knew I had an opportunity. Right, right. right. Back and we're going to the food chain. And yeah, we're, we're going to talk about that opportunity. So, um, so I know, I know, Mr. DC. I know you're always busy, as you let me know in every email that you send me. I, I know that. Me <laughs> you me out, you like, DC, I did. No emails or nothing. I did. What's wrong with you? I did. I had to cuss him out today. I was like, I didn't, I didn't even want to do like, that. I'm so sorry, but. Uh, <laughs> I'm just such a man of my word. I didn't think we had to do that, but I guess you do with a lot of people who do that. So I do apologize. So, I shall no, be I... there on time. I'll be there an hour early with bells and whistles so you will know I'm there. Because I do so not want to feel your wrath. So I, I called him today, right? And so when I called him, I was I was running. And the first thing he said was, why you call me all out of breath? And I'm like, you okay. Call me you me you... like, this is why you... <laughs> <laughs> why you call me? I'm like, that's Look, it. You got me why, you want, why you out of breath? And so I said, well, I was trying to hide it, but apparently you could tell I was out of breath. It's the, it's, it's the allergies. It's the allergies. Yeah, it's the allergies. It's a, it's okay, a, a, I'll buy that. that but uh, but that. no, on, on all seriousness, you know, thank you mm -hmm. so much. I really appreciate you being here. I do know that um, you have a very, very hectic schedule, but man, tag team, DC Supreme, you guys are, you know, you guys, you guys, I don't know if we've, we've always known you, you were here, but you know, you, you are now touching like a new generation. So um, I know your commercial, your commercial, um, it ran before the Super Bowl, but you know, uh, like I think a day after Christmas, right? And we saw it for the first time on yeah. on on Super Bowl. Uh, it's like I said, you guys have touched a whole new generation. Like, how does it make you feel? How are you feeling right now? I don't know. I'm working too hard. I don't got time working to feel. Hard. That's that's <laughs> good. That you know what? You know, that's a good thing. It, everybody asked me that, and I was like, I was excited the first two days after Geico called me, but then after that, I knew I had work to do because right. This is a once once in a lifetime opportunity, and. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a, I'm a hustler, and right. people say that all the time. I'm a hustler. I'm a hustler, but I'm a hustler. I got I'm, I play chess. I got six moves down the board. Wow. Well, if one don't work, there's another one in the hole being nurtured and curated, ready to go. And I've always been like that. Mm -hmm. And I stay on offense. And I knew that if we got this commercial, it's like it's not going to work for us in the traditional way that a Geico commercial works for artists. You like salt and pepper had theirs in 2014. Mm -hmm. They didn't stop touring till the pandemic. Wow. So I, don't get to take it, I don't I don't get to take advantage of that. Right. Mm -hmm. So I didn't I wasn't just sitting back happy at a Geico commercial. I said, what can I do? I said, I can blow up acting, I can blow up voiceover, I can blow up all the other things that I do. Mm -hmm. And I said, I need right. to publish, right? So I'm fine. I'm having meetings with publicists and they're like, Yeah, it's a pandemic and there's really not a movie premiere and you can't do a jump kick because we can't come to New York or go to L.A. and everybody be in the same room. And I'm like, all right, thank you. And I didn't take no for an answer. I went and, and whenever this happens to me, right, because this is my concept. I learn how to learn. 
Mm. Right. Oh, I like that. I like and it's that. It's one thing to just learn. You have mm-hmm. to learn how to learn. That's where everybody gets stuck. Everybody right. says, read a book. Like, man, you be daydreaming and. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. If it gets like that, I'll take the copy, dump it into the AI software. And now the AI software is reading to me. And I can continue to do other things. I can do other that. stuff. Right. You right. You know what I'm saying? And then if something yeah. hits me, oh, let me look at the, and I'm reading along with it and it's reading to me. We're reading together and I'm retaining <laughs> more information. Learn mm-hmm. how to learn. So whenever this happens to me, I go join an organization or a society. Organizations and society are full of professionals mm-hmm. who are masterful at their craft, who have been in the game 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Right. Ready to give you the game. Right. So I joined the um, I always say press release, but I joined uh, (laughs) Public Relations Society of America. Uh Right. Uh Because I wanted to learn about how to be a publicist in PR. And Uh two days in, I jump on a Zoom with the CEO of this big PR firm. And, you know, I raised my hand. I'm not shy. I was like, oh, of course not. I got a press release. Are they relevant still? And it's like, well, what's it for? And I'm like, well, I'm kind of featured. In a Geico commercial called Scoop, there it is. <laughs> and I'm looking at the chat, and the chat's like, wait a minute, no. No way. Are you serious? My kids love, they won't stop singing that. I love it. My grand loves it. My dog loves it. Everybody loves it. Everybody. And then the moderator, I'm looking at her, she's like, I'm kind word, of. Kind right? Of she's like, she like to welcome <laughs> DC to the organization. He just started. And we're going to talk about that Geico commercial after. <laughs> Of course. And, but she said, but that's a valid question. Are they still relevant? Because I knew they were, but I just had to get the validation from somebody who knows. Right. That's all you're seeking, right? And the lady was like, heck yeah. Because what has the last year been? All COVID. All yeah, COVID. Yeah. All everybody fighting with each other. Every it has been it has been such a negative experience for most people, right? Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people. And for you to come with something so feel good, it's going to work. And you need to do this to get in front of all the podcasts. You need to do this to get in front of all the journalists. You go to this site to get in front of all the TV shows. You make sure your pitches are like this. You want to run it like this. Boom, 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 boom. She gave me the game in 10 minutes. I'm joining that organization. And I haven't looked I need back. I all that. <laughs> I haven't looked back. And that is the exact reason we are all together today. Because yeah, you know, and, I, and I'm and I'm glad and I'm glad I'm I'm glad I'm fortunate, blessed because one of the things that I I've heard uh, about you and then just in you know doing my research to learn you know just to learn more about you is that you are open to share, you know you're and you know you're not one of those people like you know I've I've talked to celebrities I've been in the same room as celebrities and I'm just gonna say this they're assholes sometimes and you know and. <laughs> You know, although you can be, you're not. You know what I mean? You could if you wanted to, because you are from the time you guys did your first uh, first song to now. You can be that person, but you're not that person. And uh, no, you know, no, I can't be that person because there's a whole bunch of black women that have slapped the hell out of me. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I, was, I came up in the clubs. I started working at Magic City in '89, and. Uh-huh. I got there with Bobby Brown. Atlanta, Baby wait, Face. Atlanta Strip Club, Magic City? I, I put the bricks on Magic City. I've been working. Oh I, I started Magic City in 89. I could tell you stories that'll blow your mind. We don't got oh that much my, time. Oh, my god. Not gosh. on that level, but just on the culture. How that club really is the genesis of Atlanta hip-hop culture. So is that and how I'm you got into hip-hop? Is that how, is that how, how you I got work? into hip-hop. I got into hip-hop. Means, okay, so I met Steve in high school. Right. And I had played mm-hmm. trumpet on the piano. But when I got to high school, they had a band. Uh-huh. I was like, man, I got to be in that band. And then I got exposed to Miss Davis's choir because I'm Denver Manual High School, 84. Miss Davis had a choir. The music was so beautiful. I was like, I want in that choir. Then our first high school party, Steve and his friends came from across town to DJ. And I was like, I got a DJ. And therefore, I did all three. I got into the band, got in the choir. And got two rickety turntables with a Radio Shack mixer. It's my <laughs> turn. If I don't know about that Radio Shack mixer, okay. <laughs> right? Ken, and, Ken you are a DJ. Started. You know about the Radio Shack mixer? 
Uh, that was a tad bit before my time. Oh, hey, I'm hey, sorry. Hey, hey, I'm sorry. Okay, but I, I'm, I'm familiar with it. <laughs> and and you know, I got good at it, and I moved. I went to California, Sac State University, and I end up just doing all the fraternity parties. I end up doing, you know, learning how to make music. I'd come back home for spring break. We play Juneteenth, and then we go to the studio and make songs. So we've been doing this, and we started at the beginning of hip hop. Right. And, you know, fast forward, I came down to Atlanta my senior year to visit Steve because he had moved down here to go to the uh, Art Institute of Atlanta. And the first place they took me off the plane was Magic City. Oh, <laughs> look at here, look at here. <laughs> I had $500 in my pocket. And in a half hour, I had zero. Get Thanks. out of here. I was just going to say that. Tapped him out. Right. And what what was so incredible about it is that it was black people living in harmony. And these were the most beautiful black women I'd ever seen. And I'm talking about Amazon black women. Amazon with wow. black bodies, five, 10, six foot, beautiful women. And I had never seen nothing like that. I've seen women, I've, but see, just to see them in Amazon form where they're just- Right. You see what I'm saying? Amazon, <laughs> Amazon form really means butt naked, right? <laughs> <laughs> they were a little bit of cloth on the front or a little leaf on the front, right? That's that's Amazon for oh And God. I went back, I knew then I was moving to Atlanta, went back, finished up, got a U-Haul, came down to Atlanta. And I remember when we got I got here, we went and seen Do the Right Thing. And because that was 89. And uh we went to the club afterward, and the DJ was just having a bad night. And I was like, I could do this because I had a job at CNN. And oh, I was wow. like, I could do this for the summer and then start CNN in the fall. And I went, you know, the bouncer was like, they're going to Madge right there. And I was like, all right. I was like, Madge, you need a DJ? He's like, no, I don't need no DJ. But come see me Monday. Went and see the money. He's like, I don't need no DJ, but I need a cook. Can you cook? I'm like, yeah, I can chef a little bit. And he said, you'd be the cook and you'd be the backup DJ. Right? So oh, I was wow. the original dude that made the wings at Magic City. I, <laughs> I, oh, I heard wow. they were good. I heard wings. they were good. <laughs> I cooked two hours of chicken wings and a salad. And in the daytime, DJ was like, hey, man, I got to go run some errors, man. Why don't you DJ for me? Because he thought, OK, I got a backup DJ. I got, you know, I got a little young guy. He, let, me, let, me, let me make him do the dirty work. Mm. What he didn't realize is that I do this. And back then, the rules were you don't let nobody on your ones and twos. because They would take right. it. Mm -hmm. And I got up there and got articulate, started rocking the party. Next thing you know, money's coming out. Girls are making money left and right. They didn't know what hit them. And that Sunday, we had a meeting, first Sunday of every month. And 150 girls, Magic, DJs, and management, and Indigo, one of the top dancers, got up, said, before we start this, we want him. Magic oh, looked wow. at me like, all right, player, you up? And I was like, <laughs> here we and go. I, I was the head DJ ever <laughs> since. And people don't even realize that, whoop, there it is about Magic City. On a Friday I was gonna ask, wait. So okay, wait. So I was gonna ask you that because I was gonna ask you what's the real story behind behind the hit because I you know I heard it had to do with chocolate and cinnamon no, and no, no, peppermint. No, 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 no. See, there, there was, I was giving I was giving those girls shout outs because there that's one of the times that I remember that it was so crunk in the club. See, won't there it is the party scene. Throw your hands in the air like you just don't care, right? Right. But then you know hearing them do it. It was like a whole nother ball game, but I had already, I was already playing. It was a saying, so I was already writing it, right? Oh, okay, and, gotcha. You know, I knew, me being from California and Denver, we we made hip hop, right? So we were influenced by hip hop records, and I was in California, so I was influenced by L.A. and New York because I ordered my records from New York, uh, San Francisco, L.A., Washington D.C. So I was, I was exposed to all of hip hop, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, that, I, I was like, we're in the Southeast now. Now it's bass music. Now it's booty shake. And I was like, Steve, we ain't gonna never get out of here unless we make some up-tempo stuff. And he's like, man, I can't make that bass stuff. I was like, don't think about it like that. Think Planet Rock and Egyptian Lover. Because Planet Rock oh, is wow. the essence of hip-hop. That was it, yeah. I remember Planet that, Rock's yeah. the essence of hip-hop. He was like, bet, yeah. use the Kano sample. Uh, we put it together. I went to the studio. Recorded it that night. I had to work at Magic City. I dropped that cassette in, 
And to this day, that's the biggest response to any record I've ever played. And I've been DJing for 30 years. Wow. So, you yeah, know, that's what so, I was going to ask, too. Yeah. Um, did you did you play it in, in, in Magic City that's first? What, that's when it happened. But, yeah. you know, my hubris, I'm thinking every 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 song I'm playing going to be a hit. I, I'm, I do this. Right. So my hubris clouded my judgments as somewhat because I stopped playing. it. But it kind of was the best thing that happened because this was August of 92. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to January 93, one of the girls was like, how come you don't play that record no more? And then I'm doing regular clubs, too. So uh -huh. now I'm playing it in the regular club and the club club, the strip club. And back then, there was no rap on radio. V103 uh -huh. was the only station. They didn't play rap. They played R&B, right? Right. Yeah. So I started playing it again. Same thing happened. But this time, back then, we had record company reps who would bring us vinyl. Right. Mm -hmm. So every major label had represent representation in the Southeast and it was all in Atlanta. So they would bring us the records every week. Mm -hmm. And I got known for breaking records because I would show them, look, that one one guy, Doug Craig, bought me a record, Candyman record. He said, man, I just they don't believe in this record. And I just want to prove to him it's a good record, D.C. Just play it and see what you can do for me. I was like, cool. Come back next week. I'll let you know. He came back. He's like, what you think about that Candyman record? I was like, Candy, come here. <laughs> and I was like, what you think about that Candyman record? She was like, that's my jam. I was like, you go up oh, next. Wow. Candy went up and he witnessed everybody run to the DJ booth. Not to the DJ booth, but to the stage. The stage. And her uh -huh. and her Back then, it wasn't throw, there was no throwing money. It was all garter belt. Oh, wow. All the money went in the garter belt. So if your garter belt looked like Afro, that was equivalent <laughs> of like $1,000 <laughs> on the floor, right? Oh, so wow. So you can get as many one stuff in that garter belt. That means she was a top girl. Uh -huh. And she danced to that song. And dudes liked that song and didn't even know why. Right? <laughs> but I knew why. Yeah. And if she likes it, now the guys like it. And, if, and then that's yeah. it. She goes on stage two nights a week. I mean, two, two times a night. And there's three other girls that like it. So I'm playing that record already eight times a night. Wow. He went oh, back and wow. told his higher ups. I said, now you got radio rotation. In right. a city that doesn't even play rap. Mm -hmm. I said that. And, and that's how I started to work my records. And I've always worked my records like that. It's not, mm -hmm. about, it's not really breaking records. It's about making sure that your audience trusts you. Right. Because you're going to bring it in properly. They're, they're expecting you to play new stuff. They can't mm -hmm. wait till you to play new stuff. But if you just throw it on and be like, and, and think they're going to dance to it. No, you have to set them up for it. Yeah. So... Uh, the second time, Alan Cole from Columbia Records was like, what is that record? And I was like, that's my new record. He's like, give me that, man. He's like, this is Whoop There It Is you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, it's Whoop There It Is. Okay. I'm sorry. This uh -huh. There It Is. It was like, I'm, I'm sending this to New York. He sent it to New York. Columbia Records called me. They was like, we love the record. We just, we're just going to, we're going to wait and we're going to nurture you and we're going to build you up. And I was like, I got time for all that. <laughs> right? I was like, I got a hit record already, right? And I, I sent it to every major label through the reps. And I got all these calls and everybody was telling me how good the record was. They believed in it, but nobody was pulling the trigger. So it got frustrated. I almost gave up. Oh, and then wow. And then Lisa McCall, uh, worked for Mercury Records, she said, you need to call Al Bell because he had Daisy Dukes by Deuce last year. Uh -huh. went, oh. Right? I was like, cool, let me call him. Call Al Bell. To Mr. Bell's DC Glenn, I got a hit record. Holler back at me. Took him about a week and a half to call me back. I forgot about it. He calls me. He's like, what's up, brother? I'm like, who's it? Like, it's Al Bell. Just tell you, just full, you know, he's he's a character. And I was like, look, Mr. Bell, I got a hit record. I'm in the hottest clubs in the city. Everybody knows it. And you really need to sign us. Or you're gonna be you're gonna regret it. Uh -huh. And he was like, Okay. And I was like, wait a minute, we ain't even heard the record. <laughs> to this day, I'll never forget this because these are the most, the most beautiful words somebody said to, ever said to me. He said, brother, I don't got to hear the record. I hear it in your spirit. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. that, oh, mm -hmm. man. Yeah. Help and you know. To agree, and we're going to get yeah. this thing going. I gave my two weeks in Magic City, signed a messed up record contract, and in a month and a half, we were platinum. So that so that was kind of, that that was kind of what I was gonna ask. Kind of like two things. First, before we get to the messed up contract, mm -hmm. you were in your twenties when um, Whoop There It Is came out. So were you yeah. prepared for that, for the success that it gained? Were you like ready for that? I was ready for anything, but I was ready for that more than anything because I was in the hottest club and I knew everybody. So I would uh -huh. watch stars rise, 
and I would watch them fall. And I would yeah. take joy. I, I, I would I would see the joy in people's face when a star would fall and they just would just revel in their demise because they got treated poorly when they were stars. Right. Wow. And I vowed to never be that way. I said, I'm always going right. to be the same. As you see. Yeah. But then I worked at the hottest strip club in the country. So mm-hmm. I had already went through mine. My first year, I was like, OK, now I know how to handle this, you know, and. and for me, working in a strip club, I was liberated as a man because, you know, the cookie was not the most important thing to me. Right, because you, you, you saw it every day. You, you saw know? it every day. I was I yeah. was basically immune, right? So right. being immune, Kind of like a gynecologist. <laughs> I can make all the money, right? Because I'm not getting high on my own supply, right? Right, right. So now I'm teaching them how to make money, teaching them how to be women, teaching them we all in this together. We making money hand over fist. And it's always right. been like that with me and my girls. That's mm-hmm. why they revere me because I don't ever be trying to get none. I be trying to mm-hmm. get them money. If yeah, you get yeah. them money, you get all you get anything you want. Right. If you show them that you care, the best way to get this is I tell everybody, the best way to get you some is don't want none. <laughs> oh my don't goodness. Want, just don't want it. Right. And they're <laughs> like, like, uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm 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 brushing my big old beauty against him and he ain't even looking at me. And I know, and the girl. You don't 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 let them fool you. <laughs> red game, red got game. Me like that. <laughs> but you so, know, um, and and you know there were pivotal points like the radio station didn't play uh rap, but what Ryan Cameron did, he was a nighttime jock. Every time he had a bed, he played the instrumental. Then people start calling in, requesting the record because they had heard it in the streets. Right. That makes and sense. now That's we're right. one of the first records to be in rotation on a radio station that didn't play rap records. Wow. Except for the, wow. the mix show. They started playing a mix show like shortly before. Then Ed Lover's my boy. So Ed Lover's in the club one night. He's like, Money, what's that? And I'm like, That's my new record. He's like, Give it to me, man. I gotta have that. I was, gave it the cassette. He said, Man, I can't do nothing with no cassette. I need vinyl. <laughs> so as soon as you know, we signed, I said, Mr. Bill, I gotta have vinyl for Ed Lover. Because back then, Ed Lover was on Yo MTV Raps. Yo MTV Raps, right. Yeah. So I was gone from Magic City, but I went back down there and been up down there, gave him a couple of vinyl. That Monday, him and Dre played, boom, there it is, the entire show. And it was really, on. Yeah. And then two weeks wow. later, the Bulls win their third championship. And they played now that. all the Bulls are on stage in front of 500,000 yeah. people in Grant Park. Yep, I remember that. It, is. it was over. It was over. And then we was gone. We was there, Arsenio. I mean, we were we were we were gone for four years after that, mm-hmm. right? And you know, our record company went bankrupt. That's, okay, record- so let's oh, hold on. So one of the things that people don't realize is that you got your your record company went bankrupt, but you guys were in litigation for twenty years for that. You know, for twenty years, what was the you know um j- you know just briefly, but what was the what was it that you want you guys want um you know everything from them like what happened that you guys had to go into litigation for 20 years because over a song one record company went bankrupt another company bought it out of bankruptcy but took mm-hmm. the wrong parts of it because there was a parts in the other one but the other record companies bankrupt so they couldn't fight but they finally got a way to fight and then they was going back and forth each other through court cases through motions trying to find a place to have their trial and every motion that they had got turned down. I think they went through like 40 something motions oh, before wow, they finally wow. got their trial in wow. 2010. But me, I'm we're in the middle. They're playing us like, okay, are you on our side or are you on their side? I'm like, I ain't on nobody's side. Both of y'all are snakes. That's were, you still, were, you guys, were you guys still able to perform? Yeah, no, I mean, that, the, the show never stopped. You know what I mean? But I tried to fight one record company and, you know, my hubris is like, yeah, we're going to win. But I, I didn't realize that they got long money and yeah, I got, pockets. think I got long money. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think I, think I got <laughs> long money. Right. And I'm like, that money that you got ain't enough money to go up against them. And I learned that the hard way. So, you know, well, I had my fun. We got money, but I had to use it to fight. And then I had to go back to work. And I wasn't, I've always been a guy who doesn't cry over spilled milk, milk, who doesn't look at the glass half empty. I look at the glass half full. I said, what you going to do? Right. And what I did is I said, you are going to be a, a paralegal because 
you know that they're going to hit you in the head if you have to have a lawyer soon. So your best bet is to become a paralegal and get all this discovery together as everything goes along, organize it and make sure that you have proper documentation. You take notes. I've got everything back to the beginning when we, you know, did it ourselves, right? When we, 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 uh, before we signed the contract, when we copyrighted it mm -hmm. and you know, that proved valuable fast forward when the end, you know, they, they the second record company lost the case. And then they appealed and they kept appealing for five years from 2012 to 2017. Gosh. And the last appeal was to the Supreme Court. Mm. Can you imagine going Today, to the, the Supreme, Supreme Court? Court. Court. Whoop, there it is. Going to the Supreme Court. Court. Whoop, there it is, Kate, by tag team. I'm like, but they denied it, <laughs> <laughs> of course. But can you imagine that? Can you imagine what that would have done? Oh my right? God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, then it was like, well, if we lose, everybody gonna lose and then that's when i had to fight and because i did what i did over those years and just kept going and, and didn't didn't i wasn't an old bitter dude about it because you talk to most artists they old and bitter about it yeah, and i couldn't yeah. do that because i know that stifles you that hampers what you you can't even you can't even function you right. gotta you gotta put that deep inside it and you gotta use it as fuel right i use it as fuel don't get mad about it do something about it and right, that's what right. i did and we, I found a great lawyer in Florida and gave her a box of stuff and it was organized. They came up with seven different ways to skin a cat and we prevailed. Now it was That's war awesome. and any war, you're going to lose an arm, you're going to lose a leg, you're going to come back with an eye patch. But, <laughs> you know, it was finally over. And then, shoot, I, I, I was depressed for a whole month. I laid in the wow. bed for August 2017, just... You know, I was I really was depressed. I was like, what are you gonna do? Right. What right. are you gonna do? Were you talking about what what are you gonna do? So you guys had one, but were you talking about what are you gonna do with your life? Like what's next? What's yeah, yeah. Well, I'm like, cause I I had um I've tried every, I've tried a lot of things. I, I was a licensed commodities broker, I was a trader of forex, I did all those things. I was about to do a hedge fund, this is the early two thousands, but it wasn't for me. But I'm always I always got five hustles in the hole, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, back then when you're doing it, you're like, you learn things and you, you, you finish things to fruition. And I finished that and I knew it wasn't for me. So I moved to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And that was voiceover. I said, I got to do something. I can't be in this club forever. But what I also did, I was in a big self-help kick. And there's this one guy I remember. I don't know who it was, but I just remember the story. Guy wanted to own a pie shop. And he started as the bus boy. He went to work at a pie shop, started as a bus boy, came up, figured out how to make pies. Then he went, got his own pie shop, franchised it, made it a big company, and then sold it. It's called being in the corridor. So that's what I did with the clubs. I'm not just your DJ. I'm your light guy. I'm your sound tech. I do your radio ads. I do your television ads. I do your website. I do your SEO. I do all these things for you. And I got health insurance. And... I got a life insurance policy. What strip club DJ no have got health insurance? And <laughs> because you are on point and you are invaluable, you make yourself invaluable. Right. Right, right. now, if I want to go somewhere, they're like, nah. And here's why. They cut me a check. If they see another club open, it's like, nope. Here you go. Because I'm not going to be in my feelings because you work at another club and I know right. you're doing the same thing for us that you're doing for them. Right. So I had security and sometimes security means complacency, mm -hmm. but I always was learning. And sometimes it feels like you're not doing things because you're coming up in a society that is basically everybody, you know, everybody wants the gratification quickly. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And you realize after time, after time that there is no quid pro quo. Right. Mm -mm. It's not that I do this and this happens. You just do it. Yep. Keep it moving. Right? Yeah, but it, you, do it 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 you don't it plant fails, a seed. Yeah, it fails. You, you keep, you keep seed, on moving. Yeah, you don't plant a seed, then sit down in front of the seed, be like, okay, Let me come see on, seed, seed, grow. Yeah, grow yeah. seed. Where, where's grow. my tree? <laughs> come on now, man. This thing don't work. I quit. You know, so yeah, many people that do but that's that. how that, I was going to say. That's how a lot, a lot of that's people. a lot do. of people do uh, it, and yeah, nobody. Yeah. You, you don't. You wouldn't do that, right? So I play offense. I keep it moving. I plant them. So I started voiceover. And back then, it's 10 years ago. I'm like, 
why am I not getting this? It was challenging. And I kind of was the same way. I was like, I thought I could whoop there it is my way through anything. Right? <laughs> and you know, we're, 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 I'm still making money. We're getting shows, but this is nurturing of the new hustles, right? Right. And I always did radio spots. I always did radio. I did radio. I did all those things, but I wanted to be commercial. I wanted animation. I wanted promo. Mm-hmm. I wanted all those things. Mm-hmm. And I was with the best. Call. I would go to New York, come back to L.A., train, come back and work, go right back to New York, L.A., train. I was all over the country training with the best coaches. And your, it just, your, vocal, your voiceover coaches. Voiceover, voiceover yeah. Right. And it just, okay. it, was not, it was like, man. But I did start getting better, but I didn't have mastery over my voice. And it just took time. And then come like 2015, I'm working for Apple Radio, and then I just took the leap. I can't be a 50-year-old DJ. And I got the hell on, right? Because yeah. it was like time. And it was the most terrifying thing in my life because I've been a DJ since I was a kid. That's what you knew. Right? That, yeah. But I knew it was time. So yeah. that's why I was yeah. laying in bed in 2017, right? Thank you. And, you know, then I get a call. Hey, DC, we got a voiceover gig for you, 10G. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> right? Time to get up. <laughs> yeah, but all that work paid off, right? Yeah. You don't know when that seed's going to come back and hit you in the head. And it came back. And people no, always look- say... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You know, I just want to ask you this real quick. You know, um, and 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 it's not de- it's it's on top on topic, but off topic. But you know, whoop, there it is. Was big. You know, mm-hmm. it it was big for you guys. Uh, but mm-hmm. you really didn't have a hit after that. So I I want to know. Do you think that whoop, there it is, was so big that it was too big? Yeah, of course. Hey, I knew then. You know, you know, at first, yeah, we thought every record was going to be like that. Of course, you're a kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you don't know. You don't yeah. got no sense. Right. But then I realized that, you know, I knew that we wasn't going to be able to make records. I could have made more records, but I'm in I'm in litigation. If I made a record and it blew up, I would have been mad if they had came in just with all that foolishness. Have, right? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's part of controlling your own psyche. It's like I'm not going to even let that happen. Right. So I had to sacrifice and I had to let it go. I had to let my career go. But oh wow, but it's all good because I don't look at it that way. I look mm-hmm. at it what well, you know, I, I'm like, is this the year it's gonna fall? Is this the year boom there? Because we eating off of that. We still yeah. get a royalty check. You know, so what you I'm were saying? Think, you were thinking about that, you were making money, but still thinking about okay, it's about what? to come to an end. You were real you were yeah, yeah, it's, about, what about am I, it's always been what are you gonna do, right? Right. So it's always right. been I've always been training 24-7. Scrambling in my life, trying to figure out what else I want to do, right? And you know, they say jack of all trades, master of none, but over time right. you become masterful of some of these trades. Right, you know? right. And then yeah. it looks like you're doing like this when you're young, but then all of a sudden it comes like this. Yeah. And then it's one, it's one big nuclear engine, right? right that right. fuels everything and everything intertwines with everything else and any hustle that comes in folds into it because now it has support and a foundation to nurture it. You got the right manure. You got all the right things to take this hustle and make it something that you never would thought it would be because of all the experience. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. And I'm sitting there in the movies and I'm looking at Will Ferrell dance on the table to my song. (laughs) And then I knew that I had a forever hit record. If Uh I got a forever hit record, it's up to me. To hustle my own money right most right, artists right. always think somebody's supposed to do something for them i've never thought that i'm always hustling i'm always you're, trying yeah, to figure out angles yeah and it seemed like you were always I'm, like think thinking ahead I got it you know? i'm playing chess i got i'm seven moves down the board right what are the right. consequences of this what is that and I, I owe that to my parents because i've never not known love one and oh, that's awesome my that's mother awesome. made me work my mother uh-huh. i've been I've been stemming collard greens and shucking peas since I was five years old. <laughs> Not and stemming and shucking. That was my mother's prep. <laughs> right? And then my father made me, shove, you know, shovel snow, mow the lawn, cut the hedges, you know, wash the windows, get on the roof and fix the roof with him. He made me do, they made me, they worked us, me and my brother, like a dog. But mm-hmm. they also put, you know, reward and consequences with it. Right. So, well, okay, we give you five dollars a week if you do your chores right. But even if we did, we messed up. It was like, and, and still, you're gonna get that. But even if you mess up, we're not gonna not take your money away. Right. You're gonna take what you really love away. You don't go to church. You can't go. You can't watch TV. 
Mm. You don't, if you don't clean your room, you can't go play with your friends. If you don't do what I tell you to do, we're going to take something away. Right. And you think you can withstand that, but then after a couple of times, you realize that, oh, yeah. mm -mm, oh no. I'm not doing uh -uh. that. <laughs> Let then, me just do what I got to do. <laughs> yeah. And then there was a big blizzard. I think I was like eight years old. And we my only family had a snowblower. And I'm doing the snow. We finished ours about 15 minutes. Mr. Grant over there struggling. I said, man, let's go help Grant out, my brother. And we went and did his. And we just kept going and did the whole block. Didn't charge nobody. We just did it. And that for the next two weeks, hey, boy, come here. I appreciate <laughs> the snow. Here, $30. What? Hustle. I get paid for this? <laughs> and that started it, right? So I've never, ever, ever feared work. I don't care how hard. If the harder, the better, right? Because I know that. If it's super hard and super challenging, everybody ain't gonna do it. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's 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 called yeah, that's hard work, you know. And you just so, keep going. You know, that's why going. being an actor is the most hard actor and voiceover is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Yeah, right? that's what I was gonna ask you about. You know, we, we move forward now and now, um, mm -hmm. and now you're doing your 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 big on jingles and 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 you know, songs and, and you know what songs like voiceovers now voiceovers, but how do you like that compared to what you kind of came up on this is really different you know there is it's still there's a method yeah, behind I'm learning it again. i'm a kid again <laughs> you know because because of the pandemic right mm -hmm. like 2017 i'm still training for voiceover but i get the big gig and then my coach is like yo people store they're looking for african-american talent send them your demo send them my demo now i'm signed with a big tap the biggest talent agent in the southeast right wow. so now i'm doing auditions every day Right. Mm -hmm. But before it was just I was just trying to work for people. I was hustling. Now I'm with an agency that's that's doing big things for me. Then like maybe six, no, maybe about two, three months in, I meet the owner because I'm up there because I got another gig. And she's like, I love your face. Put him on camera. <laughs> right. Oh, wow. I was like, whoa. I was like, what do I gotta do? She's like, take acting lessons and that'll never happen, by the way take acting lessons, get some headshots and just start grinding. And I was like, yeah. cool. And I went to my first acting classes and got hooked. And anything I do, I go hard. And I was right, in class yeah. every day from 2017, two, sometimes two, three times a day. Went through every instructor in the city. I went to LA, New York. I trained rigorously. And, you know, the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. And I, I was booking little regional stuff, local stuff, but I hadn't had that national thing before the pandemic. I booked my first national Pizza Hut commercial because mm. I changed wow. my audition technique. Uh -huh. But then the pandemic hit. It was for March Madness, and you all know what happened to that. But yeah. I wasn't mad. Right. I felt it was such a victory because they booked me. They yeah. Something, you they could do it. Yeah. That I was. Just, I, I knew that my my. I, I knew that I could do this. Right. Right. I knew that I had broken through. Uh -huh. So. What I did, you know, when the pandemic hit, it's like it forced everybody to stop at the same time. Right. You know yeah. I'll like, be hustling. I'll be hu everybody. Yeah, I'll be, be grinding. Right? I'll be grinding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll be grinding. <laughs> you know, rise and grind, all that, right? But what they really doing is they in the truck. Uh, they they like they think they driving, but they look outside and not going nowhere because they're stuck in mud because their wheels are spinning. Right. And it forced everybody to stop mm -hmm. and realize that. And I, I realized I wasn't going the direction I wanted to. And the question was, what you going to do? Like, I was depressed. What are you going to do? And I was like, voiceover. Yeah, that, yeah, so every it. class I take, I record. Mm -hmm, so I go mm -hmm. back, and I have to listen to my 10-year-ago self, mm -hmm. right? I have to listen to all them conversations. I have to listen to all <laughs> like, that crap. But you're like, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It was horror. It was it was so horrific and so it was just terrible. And then I had to hear my first voiceover where I read a script and I thought I was the bomb and I wasn't. It was just it, my skin is curling and it's just, ah. <laughs> but because I stuck with it and because I'm an actor now, I knew the language. Back then I didn't know the language. Yeah. Now I know the language. I'm like, wait a minute, let me do this over. That's where it was inspiring. Mm -hmm. because I understood what they were trying to tell me back then, but I didn't understand back then what they were trying to tell me because mm -hmm. of my hubris was in the way right. because I was trying to right. move there. It is my way through it. I do this. I'm DC, the brain supreme. You got me messed up. Of course. Yeah. It. Right. That's that, 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 that would happen. 
right? It just it just does. And I redid that first voiceover and it was angelic. <laughs> and that was the first time I'd ever had mastery over my voice. Well, let me and ask you this. So <clears throat> so you have you've done there's so many there's so many generations in you, you know, there was mm -hmm. your there was your generation, there was Big Ken's generation, and then there was my kids' generation of mm -hmm. of of whoop. There it is, you know. Mm -hmm. My little one loves it, um, but there's so much more to you. And now there's voiceover. So what I want, you know, a serious question is, uh, what do you really want to be known for? Don't even matter. At it doesn't point, matter. I mean, because you care. you know because with 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 your voice, with your looks, with your music. Um, you know, with your movies and you're in the middle of making a movie now, you know, people are looking at, they have so many different things that they respect you for. And I know that some people say, well, you know, I, I think it was, uh, it may have been LeBron or Shaq. I can't remember who it was. He said, you know, I don't want to be uh, somebody that somebody looks up to, but you know, I, I, I feel like, you know, um, you should be. You know, it's like, you know, you, you know, I don't know how you feel that people look at you like that guy that was whoop, there it is. And, and, and my generation knew you for that, where, whereas my kids growing up now know you for the voiceovers and they know you for that. And, and it's, and it's encouraging to them. So I, I just feel like, yeah, you got to be known for something, something you know, that you want to lose this mark. Mission. It's my mission. This is what I live by. You give what you want first. So it's, it's selfish for me to be like, I want to be remembered as this. I don't even care because I give I give what I want first. Right. So that's one thing. And I do four or five of these a day now. And all I'm trying to do is talk to people, put them on game and let them know the things I wish somebody had told me when I was a young man. And that's and important. That is my biggest contribution. Yeah, I yeah. to sit here and spit game with y'all. Somebody's going to be touch the, the ability to touch the world is my gift. Thanks. Right. Because I'm doing it over and, and over. That, yeah, and yeah. I've not even begun yet. I'm a kid again. Right. <laughs> I'm a kid again because I switched. I switch it up. Now I know how to do PR. I know how to get in front of anybody. I know how to do anything I want to do. Now I can I can impose my will. I can uh -huh. create my own narrative. And I can right. I can actually make a difference, right? It's like, what are you gonna bring to the party? You get invited to the party, what you gonna bring? You're gonna bring a bottle of wine, you're gonna bring a casserole, you're gonna bring some cheese and crackers, you're gonna bring some chips and dip. Cool. Not me. I'm bringing an ice sculpture. I'm bring <laughs> alcohol, I'm bringing ones and twos in my records. I'm bringing a, 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 a bounce gym for the little kids out back. <laughs> I'll bring the barbecue with the steaks and the ribs and all that. And we're going to have a party and you will remember me. Right. right? That, yeah, You're going to remember it. me. What do you bring to the party? Right. That's how I live my life. I'm I bringing everything I got to this podcast. We are having a great conversation. People we are really listening. are. And you know, and they, uh, are, they are, are, are listening. And if I could touch one person, I've done my job. Right. Oh, yeah. And I don't think about it. See, that's, that's the, that's the, bit that's, over the years, I've acquired the ability to take any emotion, negative emotion, fear, envy, hate, you know what I'm saying? Sadness, despair, depression. Put it in my pocket. Don't react. It's going to get to you, but don't react. Put it in your pocket. Use it later for fuel. Right? Yeah. So if somebody hates on you, what do they say? Let your haters be your motivators. But they say that, but they don't know what it means. But for me, yeah. it's uh -huh. like... I can be trying to figure out something and I don't care if it takes me two weeks because I know when I finish it, I'm a better person for it. Right. Yeah. It's like, I don't think like that. I look at, you know, it, I'm looking at it. I don't give up. Right. right. Because I know yeah. that's the easiest way to not get something you give up. Then right. you never would have known it. And I am not going to leave this earth regretting that there's something I didn't do. So that's why I'm getting tutoring for music theory, music production. Cause I ain't made no beats in 20 years, but I know I can make songs. I'm a better artist than I've ever been. I'm a better creative than I've ever been, but I'm not about to be no artist, but I can make jingles. 
Yeah, I can different, make songs, different, soundtracks, different type, movies that I'm knowledge. In. I can make just special. I could do so many different. There's so many different ways to do things. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's just about helping people. I, people run up on me all the time. DC man, put me in the game. Like, <laughs> I ain't did that in twenty some years. How am I gonna put you in the game? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean, and I know you got connections. I know you got. I was like, I can help you, but I'm not gonna. It's gonna be different. I mean, I don't care, man. Just, just hook me up. I said, all right, give me an email address. I sent him a file. This file has a book in it, right? And like, if you don't like to read or don't want to read, there's a video in it, yeah. right? Yeah. And hit me when you finish that, and we'll talk. And I can tell you, ninety-eight percent of people do not call me back. I was going to say they do not call because people don't do want to read. Because they everybody want to wants to be a star, yeah, right? and they want it. They want it now. They want, it now. They want the, the results, but they don't want to yeah. work. The dude that exactly. wants that does call. He's like, man, DC. I still kind of understand it, but I do. But man, and I was like, I got you. And I explained it to him, and they're like, man, that's that's incredible. But how's that relevant to me? How's that going to make me a star? I was like, dude, you don't even realize what I just done. I said, I made it possible for you now that you will never get taken advantage of in this music industry because mm-hmm. I gave you the back end, not the front end, not the girls, the cars, the, the songs, the, the glamour, right. the glory. I gave you the back end. Which is what someone should have told so, down. Yeah, what someone should have said that to you in the beginning. Right? I, I'm teach, I taught you, I just taught you about music publishing because that is the nucleus of this whole music industry engine. Right. If you own your music publishing, you can have a mediocre song and make money off it for the rest of your life. That's your pension plan. And I think that's what I was going to ask you, too, yeah. is that's the one of the most important pieces is, you know, a lot of people that I talk to um, dealing with music, you know, especially since Prince and Michael Jackson, they talk about people owning their own masters and people are getting royalties off of songs. So that that's good to know that you all are doing these commercials and these movies and you all are receiving checks from this because a lot of these artists aren't. Now, not what we're supposed to get as far yeah. as the music part. But that's not my concern. My concern is I got a forever hit record, so it's up to me to hustle my money. Right. Well, I can hustle my money in so many different ways that I'm not missing nothing. Everything I get is this 28 years later. Everything I'm getting is a gift. Right. You can't look at it than what other than what it is. Right. There's some people that got catalogs that don't that don't own their own publishing and will never get another yeah. penny. Right. As the, the the music industry is littered with them. Yep. Littered with right. people who have big singles that don't even own the rights. And we own half our rights, but we we had to work it out in a way where, you know, it's going to end up being a for, you know, a pension plan. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like. We doing what we got to do now so we can get it later. And now, and I, that's why I switched it. I said, I can't just be pissed off and living about this. I, I learned that a long yeah. time ago. You got to change now it. It's about, change it. Change it for the future. Everything changes. And then the pandemic happened and everybody's sitting around waiting for it to come back the way it used to be. And if you're doing that, yeah. you're going to be sitting around waiting for it to come back the way it used to be. Because yeah, exactly. it ain't coming back. All right, we're standing in a new frontier. We're standing on a new frontier. And then because of all these seeds I've laid, all these seeds that I've laid and didn't think about, even from like from last year, from 10 years, whatever. Now I'm standing in a forest of opportunity that I could have never imagined. Being a all kid because again. Of my hustle. <laughs> yeah. Because of my hustle. Right? <laughs> yeah. Because I didn't give up. Because I thought differently. Right? Because I gave, because I didn't sweat it, because I just kept pushing. Mm-hmm. Right. And that is the essence of why I'm in this position. And I, yeah. I'm not stopping, right? No, I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of all kinds of different ways to figure out different things. And, you know, the Geico commercial is the guy, but that, you know, the Geico commercial is the Geico commercial, but the Geico commercial showed me that it's special because it's touched so many people and I bring so oh, much. Oh, it has. Oh, the world, yeah. Right? Yeah. That, has. that is it. That's my gift. So I got to give. If I don't give, I don't keep getting blessed. Yeah, give what yeah. you want first, right? I don't Absolutely. think about it. I just do it. So that's why I'm going to do so many podcasts and so many interviews and just let people know, you know, you're going to learn my history. You're going to learn my wisdom. You're going to learn a little bit about my hustle. You're going to learn about I'll give it all to you yeah, because yeah. you can't eat this elephant in one setting. 
Oh no, yeah. You're gonna you're take right, a huh? fork here, you're gonna take a fork there, and the beautiful thing about it is that all this is gonna be recorded and you got it all over the internet. And it's, and, yeah, and it's yeah, and, it's a, and it's a you for can everything. Find it. Yeah, and, and people and, that want help, I can help them, but you gotta show me you're ready to do the work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna call you. <laughs> I'm gonna call you. Hey, hey. But you know, but you know, I, 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 you know, DC. I know you know all about this ride, and but I know now that you you're a kid again, you're gonna enjoy this to the fullest. I want to thank you with everything for being on uh, on the show today. And I thank was gonna you. tell people, you know, about going to your site, but you can type in DC Supreme, and he is. So I've been about me and it's, because I like good breadcrumbs, but that's yeah, SEO. exactly. I learned it took me ten years to learn that. Now, <laughs> you type in now you know, and you can find me. That's why I, yeah. I don't even people are like. So where is your Instagram? Oh bro? yeah, I, I wasn't. Yeah, type I wasn't going to even tell anyone because yeah, I can yeah, type in DC Supreme just say, hey, because I can tell a little story. When Barack Obama, they thought he was in the video. Nobody could find us, and I lost money because of that. And if we were getting oh. the whole week. And I vowed that'll never happen again. And I spent 10 years learning SEO, search engine optimization, mm-hmm. yeah, building websites, and now I'm cold with it. And I can <laughs> I can impose my will. That oh, press see, release me, didn't work, no. just wasn't for press. Let that me I gotta step in, Big Ken, because you know, DC Glenn said he's cold with, with websites and stuff, but I'm I'm the coldest. <laughs> oh hey, cold, I coldest. Yeah, I said Frio, it all that. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> but however however I'm, I'm always the one to say i'm not the smartest one in the room there are so many things that i can learn from you and i would like to say i have his phone number y'all don't so i'm gonna call him <laughs> oh, anyway, is beautiful yeah it's it beautiful. is it's, it's a beautiful thing once you once you learn it it's uh it's the best but you know hey ken get up ken jump on this game jump on this train <laughs> Hey, I'm trying to. I'm trying to learn as much as I can. I'm trying to be a sponge and soak it all up. Oh, there you go. Oh there, you go. there you go. Thank you so much, DC, no for being on the no show. I, you. I know I you're busy, but here. I really appreciate your time, and I will definitely be in touch. All right. Thank you very much. All right. All right. You too. Wait. <laughs> Peace. Well, oh, we got more. <laughs> there we go. Bye, crazy. <laughs> Oh my God, he's he is the best. Oh my God, hey, you know. If anybody, the people who watched this interview today, if anybody was watching this, and you were confused about some things, you needed some motivation. He just gave you everything in one hour. Yeah. So you have no excuse moving forward. I looked at him. I was listening to him. As he wiped his forehead with the towel and the gray beard. He's like a hip hop T D Jakes. He's got all yeah. the motivation you need. He just preached a sermon. Now pass the collection plate, y'all. Exactly. Because he just and gave you all the game and motivation you need and to be yeah, successful. And the, the knowledge, you know, and that's the thing about the show. If you listen to the people that are on the show, you are going to walk away with something. I know that like you, like you big kid, listening to him, you know, I walked away with a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of knowledge. And like you said, he leaves the breadcrumbs and he definitely does. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I definitely have to uh, to contact him because I got some questions. So but, you know, the great thing is that he left our viewers with uh, with some more knowledge. And that's that's what's important. And I love it when people come on the show uh, like D.C. and they are so willing to give their knowledge because they want to leave those breadcrumbs from the people that are coming up behind them. And so. I think yeah. that's I think that's huge for our society in general because not enough people do that. Not enough people who have gone through these arduous, you know, journeys right. and been through all this stuff are willing to look back and say, you know what, I don't want y'all to go through all that that I went through. Here's the information exactly. that you're gonna need. Exactly. And here I hope I hope and pray that you apply it. Because you can't make people apply it, but you can give it to them, you know, and hope hope for the best. So I appreciate him coming on this platform and any other platform he's been on and giving that information because it's it's very much needed. Oh, yeah, it is. And, you know, it's like through 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 his music and and now through all the things that he's doing now, he he affected lives positively back then when he came out um, and then he's doing it now. So, yeah, it was good to have D.C. the Brain Supreme. Yeah, that was a uh, that was one of those songs you like. Oh, oh, 
Oh, never danced to it though. I didn't. You I didn't know, dance to that. I didn't you dance know what? to that. That song. That, was... that song determined how I dress. So let me tell you something. So what? Just calm down. Let me just tell you something real quick, okay? So, uh oh, uh oh. So. Back in the day, remember when, and I don't say no, because I'm just going to ask this question anyway. Remember back in the day when girls used to wear those little short shorts, those little Daisy Dukes? Yeah, you remember. I answered the question. I oh, yeah, no doubt. Okay, so I used to wear those. And I used to, I used to have like the, the, be quiet. I used to have the cassette player where you could put, you know, you put it on pause. I had it in my car. So I had a Jeep because back then all the rappers had Jeeps. I wasn't a rapper, but I looked good driving a Jeep. So I was just kind of like, okay. So I would play this song, right? And I would wear a shirt. If the shirt was over my belly button, it was too big. So I'm like, okay, no, it got, it got, it got to be shorter for this song. So let me tell you how crazy I was back then. So I play the song, right? And kid, I know you did this. You know how you drive in your car and the light is green, but you play your jam. You want to wait till that light turn red. So when you get to the light, you can turn the song up. That's what I did to Hoop Daddy. <laughs> well, yeah, I think we all I think we all had a song like that. You know what I'm saying? But like yeah. I said, for me, when I think of this song, I it wasn't a song, of course, that dudes was dancing to. It was a song that we watched the women dance to. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And for me being and a young be like, managed man. Yeah, hey, you know? I mean, I was a young young fella, about by, by 12, 13, you know what I'm saying? I was managed. Yes, I was. 93. In 93, I was 13. <laughs> Ooh, I don't even want to tell my story no more. That sounds icky. <laughs> I was 13. <laughs> oh, my God. So, I was a little managed fellow. So, uh, you know, I was I was looking at, the, looking at the ladies dance to the song. So, when I saw the videos and now that he gave the back history of him, you know, being the DJ at Magic City, everything kind of came full circle for me. So, it makes perfect sense that the song did what it did. Right. There you go. So yeah. Yeah. So All now right. we know what he was saying. Move there it is. We know what we know what that dad is was. You know, yeah, exactly. We know exactly <laughs> what there it is was. So, <laughs> but you know, I used to hear that song everywhere. I went to a softball game and the guy hit a home run. And guess what song came on? Ooh, there it is. I was like, ooh, that song is everywhere. <laughs> yep. And will be forever. <laughs> yes, it will be. So um, so all right, so I, I just saw somewhere somebody put don't put grapes in the microwave. Okay, yeah, Ken, you and them grapes. Yeah. So um, anyway, um, I'm excited about season three. I'm excited about a couple of changes that we're making. Um, but one thing that's not going to change is where you can listen to KUTC Live. You can always watch our episodes, past episodes on KUTC on Facebook. KUTC Live, or you can always go to blacklightentertainment.com. I sound, I have a cold, so I can't really say it right, but it's black, B L A Q U E. It's like all this stuff up here. Blacklightentertainment.com. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can watch KUTC Live every Wednesday right here. KUTC Live. Um, okay, so I, I still in the I still in the show with the quote. And this week, you know, I, I was thinking about I want a quote that's not only it has its own way of motivating and encouraging people, but it also speaks to diversity. And so the quote that I came up with is, our ability to reach unity and diversity will be the beauty and the test of our civilization. Until next time. Make sure y'all keep up the conversation. Move that Peace. is. Sprinkles. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>